Hello everyone and welcome to Nervous Nessie. Today I wanted to share some things to think about for surviving a flight. And what I mean by surviving a flight is flights can be very cramped, they can be long, they can be annoying, stressful, give you so much anxiety. So I wanted to share some things to think about to take all of that away and have a pleasant experience. When you are on a flight, you are on there cramped up in a small seat. Even if you are in first class, you're still sitting for long hours. Unless you're taking a short flight, you want to get up and move around and stretch. Now, this doesn't mean you have to pace up and down the aisle. You could just stand just for a little bit. And if you're in the middle seat or the window seat, yeah, you may have the overhead bin, but just getting up a little bit, just standing up just enough for a few seconds every couple of hours, that can help. Uh, when you fly and you're sitting for long periods of time, your legs can swell. This can cause blood clots, especially if you're older. So you do want to get up and move around and stretch. Your arms are mostly going to be at your side the whole time. So when you do get up, make sure you also stretch your arms. Have them up over your head to where you're circulating the blood through your body. Another thing to think about when it comes to flying is your bathroom breaks. Now, when you get on the plane, the way it usually goes is everybody boards, they find their seat, they put their luggage away, and then once everybody's basically settled, the plane will taxi down the runway and then it will take off. And once you get to that point where you're starting to taxi down the runway, you have to be in your seat with your actual seat belt on. And from that point until the captain gives the seatbelt sign, turns it off, you can't get out of your seat. You're stuck. Unless you are having some kind of emergency and you really must go, you're supposed to stay in your seat. So if you're someone who needs to go to the restroom a good bit, then once you find your seat and you put your luggage away and the crowd in the aisle starts to thin out, go to the restroom then. Once the actual sign is turned off for the seat belt, be ready to get up and go to the restroom should you need to. Same thing goes for when you go to land. The pilot will actually make an announcement. We will be landing in X amount of minutes. Let's say 30 minutes. Usually they give you about a 30 minute warning, 20 to 30 minute warning. And once you actually get that warning, then you're gonna kind of go back into the mode of you need to have your seat belt on and stay in your seat and you'll have to stay there until you officially get off the plane. So whenever the pilot starts to give the announcement, get up right away, go to the restroom. That way you don't have to hold it until you actually get off the plane. If you are taking a red eye, which is basically a flight that occurs overnight, most likely you're going to want to sleep on the plane along with everyone else. Everybody's gonna pretty much wanna sleep because it's the time that most people sleep. So whenever you are taking a red eye, make sure that you take an eye mask and a pair of earplugs, and that way you can get a good night's sleep. A tip for you, if you are going to take a red eye flight, get the window seat. 
I usually end up getting the aisle seat whenever I fly. I prefer the aisle seat, but for red eyes, I get the window seat because you naturally have a place to lean over and lay your head in order to sleep. Along those same lines, you're going to probably want to take a pillow or something to support your neck. Now, I don't use those. I have neck problems, so they actually make my neck problems worse. But a lot of people carry a neck pillow and put it on that way they can have something to help hold their head up should they want to take a nap on the plane or sleep on a red eye. And a lot of times people will kind of use them. I, I guess there's no right or wrong way, but most people wear it where it comes around the back and then attaches in the front. The times that I have had the neck pillows, I turn it the other way. I keep the open part in the back, have the neck pillow in the front, and it supports my chin to where I'm not on the plane asleep with my mouth open and drooling during the flight. Another little tip for you is if you know that you're going to sleep on the flight, gravity naturally is going to pull your jaw down and your mouth is going to be open while you sleep most of the time. So if you don't want to sit there and have everybody being tempted to throw things into your mouth while you sleep, no, they're not going to do that. But if you don't want to have your mouth gaping open while you sleep and you're drooling all over yourself, wear a face mask. Wearing a face mask covers that up and nobody can tell if your mouth is open or closed. Another thing that you might want to take when you are flying is something to keep you warm. That could be a blanket, a sweater, a jacket, because most of the planes have air pumping through full blast and will be very cold. I know I usually get quite cold when I'm flying, so I always carry a jacket. Sometimes I wear it, sometimes I don't, but I always carry a jacket. And if let's say you aren't getting cold, you can always take that jacket off, roll it up, and use it as a pillow. I've definitely done that a few times. Another way that you can survive a flight, especially a long flight, is to have something to do on the flight. Now, a lot of the airplanes do have TVs and you can watch movies. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they're not, sometimes you have to pay for them. But if you want something to do before your flight, download whatever it is that you wanna do. Maybe you want to read a book, or watch a movie or TV show, or you want to play games on your phone or your tablet, download all of that stuff before the flight. That way you'll have access to it. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay the fee for the Wi-Fi for the flight. And that fee can actually range anywhere from just a few dollars all the way up to 20, I've even seen $30 for the Wi-Fi. So download whatever it is you want to do and have that ready for your flight. Another thing to think about before you get on your flight is, is there anything that you may need during your flight? Maybe it's a medication, maybe it's snacks, maybe if you are traveling with kids, it's something you need for the kids. Maybe it's diapers or it is a sippy cup for the kids. Whatever it is that you think that you may need during your flight, make sure that your carry-on bag is packed in a way to where you can easily access it. Once you actually get onto the plane, you don't have a lot of room to move around. You may have to stand up in the aisle, blocking the aisle, put your bag in your seat, and then rummage through. If you have everything packed smartly before you get on the plane, you could just pull the bag out, have it in your lap, open, it's right there, take it out, whatever it is, and use it. 
So before you get on the plane, make sure your carry-on bag is packed in a way to where you can easily access anything that you would need while you're on the plane itself. The next thing that you want to think about when it comes to flying and how to survive your flight is be friendly. Be friendly to the staff. They're just doing their job and their job entails a lot of rules that they're not allowed to break. They can't make special circumstances for you just because you think that you deserve those special circumstances. Be nice to them. I've had where I did have a flight and I wanted one of the snack boxes. And this was kind of my fault. I decided I wanted it after they had already passed with the cart. And I felt bad, but I rang for the steward to come. And when they got there, I said, oh, can I get one of the snack boxes? And those snack boxes you have to purchase. Uh, when they came back with the snack box, I said, oh, do you need my card information? And they said, don't worry about it. It's on the house because of how friendly you were. I was shocked because <laughs> it told me two things. Number one, how unfriendly people are to the staff. And I was just being general polite. I wasn't like kissing up to them. I wasn't doing anything extra. I was simply saying thank you and please and being just courteous. And I ended up getting my snack box for free because of that. I'm not saying that that's going to happen every time because that's the only time that's ever happened to me. But be nice to the staff. Same thing goes for the people that are on the row with you. Be nice to them as well. You're stuck next to them for the duration of the flight. So you want to be friendly. Simply say hello. You don't have to give them your name or anything like that. Just be friendly. When I end up taking my flights, I always get the aisle seat. And I know how awkward it is to be in the middle seat or the window seat and needing to get up and use the restroom and you're having to crawl all over the people on the row. Because I haven't always sat at the aisle seat. So whenever I sit down and the people get onto the row next to me, I simply tell them, hey, if I happen to fall asleep during this flight and you need to get up, all you have to do is just tap me, tap me on the shoulder and let me know and I'll get up. Don't be afraid to wake me up. And it goes so far. Whenever I do that, the people that I say that to, they're always just so receptive. It breaks the ice and they are very courteous. They just kind of tap me on the shoulder. I get up to let them out and then I'm mindful of when they come back so they don't have to bother me again. And I get up, let them back in. It just eases the tension of having to sit that close to a total stranger for hours on end. So be nice, be kind to the people on the plane because you're just stuck with them. The final thing to think about when it comes to your flight and how to get through it is be patient. It is a very stressful time. You have no control over this situation. Sorry, you don't. Most of the time, the steward and stewardesses on the plane don't even have control. Sometimes even the pilot does, doesn't even have control. If there's bad weather, no one on this planet can control the weather. You just have to deal with it and things can happen. The flight may get diverted to a different location. The flight may be delayed or canceled. Who knows? But just be patient. It will just take your stress and anxiety level way down if you are just in the mindset of being patient overall. 
and also be patient with everyone else on the flight. If there's a baby crying, be patient. Think about the parents. The parents are probably embarrassed that their child is crying. Maybe they're stressed out and frustrated themselves. Just be patient. Don't add to everyone else's anxiety just because you're having anxiety. Simply be patient. I know that flights can be stressful. They can be long and tiring. And I wanted to share with you some ideas and some things to think about to try and take the whole process down a notch or two. And if you like this video, then give me a thumbs up. If you want to know when the next video comes out, then subscribe. And I look forward to seeing everyone in the next video. Bye!